environment. So Manjula is going to talk about it. So I'm not going to introduce Manjula. He's all knowing. So uh, he specializes in both TV and software engineering fields. And although he has some busy schedule, he says in his last two days here with us. He accepted our request to uh, conduct this session to share his valuable knowledge. So thanks Manjula in advance and Manjula over to you. Right. Thank you. Give me one minute. Uh, we have to consider this Jabra uh, device. Okay. Thanks, Prasad, and good afternoon, everyone. So, uh, this session is uh, sort of a, a session with hands on. Uh, so, uh, you might uh, configure your machines with the Anyway, you, you can of course uh, try out uh, while I'm uh, presenting this uh, to set it up and uh, execute things. But of course, I'll, I'll send all the details, uh, even the even the scripts that we are creating uh, right now. So, so you all can uh, try it out later as well. But uh, try to uh, configure things uh, while I'm uh, presenting this so, so uh, we can uh, Try this out, and uh, if there are any questions, anything to be clarified, we can uh, discuss later. As well. right? So, uh, to start with uh, <coughs> performance testing, I am I'm pretty much sure that all of you all are uh, fairly uh, knowledgeable about performance testing. But, but to uh, outline uh, performance testing is uh, is something that uh, type of testing that we do in order to secure secure the performance uh, aspect of the applications that we, we are developing so this is one of the non-functional requirements basically we need to get this uh, from the from uh, from the uh, uh, requirement uh, definers those who work with requirements Especially when it comes to our our application development, it's, it's good that you all also uh, take this aspect into consideration when you all are developing, testing, whatever we do, because it's normally we don't get all these non-functional performance related requirements in the paper, so that is quite common. So it's, but, but from our side, we, we need to be very conscious on this when we are developing and testing. So the performance at the end of the day, that matters to the customers. So, so we need to be very uh, conscious on this aspect. Uh, I have listed down a few, few of the uh, performance uh, testing types uh, here. Uh, those are mainly the testing types we, we used to uh, have in our organization. Even. So, uh, otherwise, there are a number of uh, 
more types when it comes to performance testing as well. And, uh, when it comes to performance profiling, mainly we we call performance profiling is something that we uh, we take the functional measurement. So how how long it will take when you perform a single user perform action? How long it will take? So these are sort of uh, measures that we use to take when we are developing functions to see whether the particular function and the feature is uh, up to the expectations. Usually we have this uh, uh, 5 seconds response time or can be 10 seconds in certain cases so the page should be loaded in 5 seconds in that case. So that these are simple, there are simple tools that we can do performance profiling even, even uh, most of the browsers are now compatible with these uh, developer tools so you can see how long it takes to load the particular page or function. So the other three mainly load testing, uh, volume testing and stress testing. These are the testing types we, we, we do with with the tools, special tools, uh, performance testing tools like JV. So, uh, load testing uh, refers to the testing kind of uh, we put uh, simultaneous users which which simulates the actions in the production. So, so you, you all know that the number of users are accessing uh, production environment simultaneously. So that is the environment or that is the test that we are trying to simulate in load testing. So number of, uh, you, you can have a lot of uh, ways like uh, we, we used to do uh, moderate load throughout a longer period like uh, two days, three days of time. We are, uh, we are putting moderate load like uh, thousand users doing certain function throughout few days so that sort of load tests are there. Others it's, it's purely depend on your your requirement and how you are going to test. Basically in load tests we are trying to make sure that we we simulate the production scenario or or somewhat higher than that. So that that makes that, that makes us to ensure that this system will work in production without any issues. But uh, when you go to the fourth one, stress testing, that is something else. And stress testing is something that we, we need to uh, find the break point of the system. So uh, the maximum uh, load that can be handled by the system, this is the testing type that we, we used to have, stress testing. So we try to put the maximum load and see how how the system behaves. So there can be a break point if that is the case. We, we try 1000 users, then 2000, 5000, 10,000, then you will find the break point. So that's how we, we do the stress testing in order to find the break point or, or, or to or see what is the maximum uh, capacity with respect to that. Uh, volume testing is another type of testing uh, where especially now you know we, we need to we need to build the system and test them by looking at the future as well you know uh, for example if you take this uh, ASA after sales uh, uh, accelerator that we have been built as, a, as an example so every day you get number of orders thousands of orders into the database so that get accumulated over the time. So when you look at uh, a period like uh, in the next next two years time, you need to uh, you need to ensure whether this what we are building will be uh, capable of handling the load at that time in the two years time in the production. So that is also another aspect. So we need to forecast by looking at the current. Uh, load or the current volume that is uh, getting into the system, we need to forecast how how we, uh, the volume will be in two years time in the production. Uh, so by looking at that, we need to populate that amount of data in, 
data into the database and then <laughs> perform a kind of a load test on top of that in order to secure that uh, in order to see that uh, still we are complying with the performance uh, uh, definition so that is something we call volume so these are the kind of uh, types we, we have been using uh, in ebuild more or less of course uh, there are you know when it comes to different uh, product areas like procurement and travel i know they they are doing uh, a load test for each and every uh, major release. so for each major release they do a performance but in that case they have a uh, scenario that they do they continue to do that and compare with the previous uh, results whether there are any details or updates so that is how they do it and also in NASA you know they have had the different scenarios time to time so what I am going uh, next I am going to show you is uh, one of the examples so uh, this is uh, this is an example uh, where we have had in our e-build history. This, of course, as I told, we, we used to uh, do performance tests within within our products, so within the releases, release cycles. But this was uh, Nokia China evaluation was one of the uh, performance tests that we have ex explicitly done uh, to the customer. So this. The uh, objective of this uh, test was Nokia wanted to roll, roll out our application ASA uh, in China so in, but in that case even though rolling out the application is not, not, not that kind of a big issue but in uh, China they have had this uh, specific uh, issue of uh, security so with the security constraints that they, they have in the, in the country itself, they have a lot of, as far as I know, these firewalls and these things uh, to secure the content that leads uh, to this loan. So the latency is very high when you access applications from China. So if, if we are to open our ASA application, which is uh, which is deployed in 24s in Sweden. So they were not sure whether uh, the application will be, uh, you know, uh, effective in that sense, whether it will be very slow to the users or not. So that's what they wanted to make sure before they rolling out into China. So this was the uh, this was the test uh, we have done in order to uh, uh, check whether it will be feasible or not. So, uh, so we did this uh, particular uh, test and uh, here I have uh, given some of the statistics but I have the uh, exact uh, requirement uh, that Nokia has put in place. So this this is something that I'll, I'll share uh, the uh, text of this and uh, not the uh, entire document but uh, the requirement uh, so you can see by looking at this how how we need to uh, kind of uh, structure a, a performance test test what what has to be considered in advance and what has to be uh, defined in advance so you can see uh, even the environment uh, the server environment and the client environment we need to specify and then the volume of data and also the background load if we are going to uh, you know if you are to do as I said performance profiling taking a time on a specific function so uh, some in some tests they are expecting to have a background load and on top of that you take the time taken for particular function so that sort of scenarios and the test cases here you can see there are six test cases six different test cases so we actually executed this uh, six different test cases parallel 
uh, for two days time continuous so that was the scenario so everything is uh, uh, specified here the strategy and everything so I'll, I'll share the uh, text uh, of this particular thing so you can have a look and uh, understand how, how we should uh, prepare for a kind of a performance test actually in this particular test uh, we have uh, executed uh, in real time we have uh, executed the test from uh, three or four sites in China so uh, actually one uh, one of our Chinese uh, uh, team members went to the uh, exact location uh, one of the hubs and uh, two repair centers so likewise so we have executed this on the real uh, uh, I have uh, the results as well just to show you uh, how we should capture the results and uh, at the end of the day how we come to conclusion based on the results so, uh, see for example this is one of the uh, functions batch create written that uh, asa guys must know uh, you can see the baseline here we have taken a baseline when we access the same application same environment from suite so that was the baseline we have checked so uh, compared to baseline how it has been in uh, two sites site 2 in red and site 3 in green so at at the end I, if I remember it correct uh, Nokia has decided ba based on these uh, results these results I was in that particular meeting, this <coughs> meeting. so based on these results they have decided uh, to go ahead with uh, the deployment that we have in 24 hours otherwise the option alternative was to have a separate deployment in China itself within the China so they don't have this latency issue uh, by accessing outside so that was the decision they wanted to make based on these results but uh, they have decided to go ahead with our existing deployment in 24 hours because the latency is not that high or manageable in that sense so this is one of the uh, example that uh, you can see how, how useful or how we real time use the uh, performance tests in uh, software development. So then I'll, I'll move into uh, the JMeter case. So we, are, we will uh, focus on JMeter as the test. Uh, performance test tool today but uh, for your information now eBuilder uh, has uh, taken a decision when, when, when it comes to the CCO we are now trying to go ahead with Gatling which, which, which is uh, uh, you know when you compare Gatling and JMeter in the inter internet you, you will see that Gatling is uh, somewhat lean uh, in that sense so it doesn't take a lot of uh, uh, you know uh, resources in in the in the client side when you execute it jmeter takes the resources of that uh, particular machine than gatling so gatling in good in that sense but still there are cases that uh, jmeter is very much popular even now so there are a lot of organizations worldwide uh, using jmeter so it's good for you all to know the concept of performance testing how we do performance testing and what parameters we need to consider so the tool doesn't matter I mean uh, uh, creating a script or uh, configuring it will be a, you know a task of uh, uh, getting to know the basics of the, that particular tool otherwise the uh, the way that we define, we uh, parameterize, we uh, configure the scripts according to the requirement is fairly uh, similar in all the cases. So it's good for you all to know the basics. So I'll, I'll start with uh, 
one of the documents that I have created, but uh, halfway through, I'll uh, move into the standard document where you can find in the JMeter website as well. So, uh, if, if you are configuring your machines, you need to download the JMeter. If you type it in the in the Google uh, JMeter Home, you will be landed in JMeter Home as the first uh, link. So there you have this uh, download link. Uh, you can download the latest uh, stable version. It's a matter of uh, extracting the uh, this binary, extracting it and uh, copying it to your disk. So uh, nothing uh, to be installed. Just uh, extract and copy it in the your hard disk and then uh, it will be convenient if you put uh, put it into your path the bin folder into your uh, path variable so that uh, y'all can uh, start jmeter at any uh, any position or any folder in your machine so that will be convenient also uh, uh, when it comes to uh, when it comes to recording the scripts in JMeter, we have two two basic ways. One is uh, uh, using a third-party tool called Bad Boy. This this tool is everywhere, but if you if we are to use in an organization, of course, we have to. Uh, we have to get the license, uh, but uh, it's a freeware. Uh, we all can try it out uh, without any issue. So uh, you can uh, you can download it in, in, from this uh, particular link. I'll share these all these documents once I'm done with the uh, session. So uh, badboy.com.au. This this you can uh, download that and install a simple software. I'll show that as well, so that uh, you have uh, that option or as well. So I've already installed it in my machine. Uh, one thing to mention: I mean, uh, this though this this is a very uh, simple way of creating JMeter scripts. It's, it's always advised. Uh, to use the uh, native way of uh, doing it uh, using JMeter proxy server because uh, even during uh, the, the uh, script uh, creation work that we have done so far we have identified some of the there are certain features that has not been captured by bad boy so that leads to at the end of the day uh, you need to investigate a lot of things uh, to fix those uh, incomplete issues in scripts. But but uh, that is not very common, I would say. For simple work, of course, you can use uh, bad boy. But in, in certain cases, in uh, very rare certain cases, we have seen some of the issues with this tool. So it's very uh, simple. You can uh, uh, put the uh, URL here which we which you are going to uh, record or, or the uh, record the function uh, function feature that you are going to performance test so in uh, today's uh, session I'll use one of the travel test systems uh, travel accelerator uh, saabtest.tvl.com so once you have pasted the URL, you can uh, press the go uh, link. Then uh, put up the user details. then you will be landed in the welcome page of the accelerator travel accelerator application and you can perform another action of searching uh, 
travel fields and then maybe we can log out the application as well so that was the simple uh, test case that i have tried out uh, once this is done uh, you can export this particular script into jmeter compatible script so we have to export to jmeter function here uh, bad boy test so then then of course uh, you have to you have to open the open that particular script uh, script and see whether and see how it shows in the jmeter application so uh, before moving forward uh, once you are done with your configurations related to jmeter you can start jmeter from jmeter w command in command line so that will open up the jmeter and if you open the script we have created bad boy test will show you uh, number of uh, requests here related to what the performed actions so this is the uh, request where we pass all our username password details and then uh, this is the request where we did the search and uh, the logout action so intermediate we have some other requests as well so uh, this is the simplest way of uh, creating a jmeter script but uh, as i said we have some certain uh, instances uh, we have noticed uh, there are issues with respect to bad code so we'll we'll more focus on the generic way of doing it through jmeter proxy where even they do recommend that one thing to show you at this point these are the requests http requests that has been recorded so you can see uh, in each request uh, you have this uh, url uh, the ssh uh, https port and uh, protocol in each uh, request so this this uh, if, if we have this kind of uh, script uh, it's very uh, hard for us to use this in uh, different environments for example now if you need to use the same script in uh, testing environment and production or staging so we need to configure this script in a way there will be simple changes or, or the parameterized way to to do a certain configuration now if you are to use this in uh, travel production or staging environment you need to go one by one in this uh, http request change these parameters or at least this one so uh, so there is another way of doing it uh, i'll show that uh, going forward I, I just wanted to show you that uh, we need to uh, think of uh, arranging the scripts as well best practices so that uh, it will be reusable and uh, convenient to use okay so that is all about bad boy uh, recording i'll then move to jmeter proxy step by step uh, guide this is uh, this is a document uh, available in jmeter website as well so i have downloaded it so we'll we'll go step by step in this this guide and uh, try to uh, create the same uh, jmeter script through this but this is very important as i told you this is the important way of doing it so if there's anything anything unclear please uh, 
raise your question so that we can uh, sort it out uh, during the discussion as well. Any questions so far? Okay, so here it says uh, go to JMeter home bin and start the JMeter. So, uh, but uh, you will uh, realize uh, while doing this uh, exercise, you will realize uh, it's very important for us to uh, start the JMeter uh, in, in the same folder that we uh, store and create our scripts and uh, store our <coughs> configuration files because then we can uh, use the relative paths rather than uh, using this uh, absolute paths in the in the configurations which is very you know uh, yeah when it comes to uh, reusability it's very hard for someone else to use uh, because these uh, uh, absolute paths are hard coded in the script so uh, i'll start jmeter in the uh, folder that i'm going to use jmeterw and then <coughs> move forward with the uh, instructions here given so select test plan on the tree right click on the test plan and add new thread group so I'm going to select test plan right click add a thread group so that is uh, depicted in, in uh, here as well. Then select the thread group, uh, right click, add config element HTTP request defaults. Config element HTTP uh, request defaults. Importance of having this request default is I showed you uh, in uh, bad boy script we have had uh, uh, this uh, serve IP or the uh, URL and uh, port protocol in each and every request so mm -hmm. here we are going to centralize it using this HTTP request default config element whatever we put here it will be uh, inherited into the all the HTTP request. So if, when we are to record uh, this through this proxy server, it will automatically, you know, uh, record as blank entries in the request. Rather, uh, referred into this uh, defaults uh, config element. Right. So that is the importance of uh, having this request default. So since we are going to test the SAP test ebuilder.com. I'll put uh, I'll put so IP server name IP as uh, subtest.ebuild.com. Then uh, port number will be 443 for HTTPS and the protocol HTTPS. Right. Then uh, the next step uh, in new HTTP request defaults element. Server name. Oh, here we here they are referring to their test. They are going to test uh, the JMeter Home uh, website. So I have uh, replaced it with uh, our test server. And uh, thread group. Right click thread group at recording controller. Logic controller recording controller. So I'm going to add a recording controller logic controller recording controller next step uh, select workbench you can see workbench is here right click on workbench and add the recorder non test element http test script recorder non test element https uh, test script recorder so i have added that as well then uh, moving into next uh, on HTTPS test script recorder click add button to URL patterns here, here of course you can uh, include exclude URL patterns as well but uh, in our case I'll, I'll uh, skip this yeah at this point I'll, I'll skip because we have lot of 
URL patterns rather than HTML, you know, HX poles, all these things are there. So I'll skip this. So we can see what are the uh, URLs uh, that can be captured uh, through the box. Right. Otherwise, you can exclude. Uh, for example, now uh, you will see during the recording all the JS uh, files, uh, image files, even those are captured. Right. So those, of course, you can exclude uh, if you need. Right. For the for the sake of uh, having a clean script and uh, of course, uh, you know when it comes to uh, performance testing, you can uh, simulate caching as well. It doesn't uh, really require to download all the images, etc. in each and every iteration of the user. Because once you are access the application, so you those will be of course coming to the cache. Right? Uh, I'll skip this point and then uh, test script recorder at listener listener view tree view results tree so I'm going to add a listener here view results tree next one return to HTTPS script recorder and click the start button okay now uh, we are going to start the proxy server here before start, uh, I'll change the port uh, here. It has 8080, but uh, maybe this is a very common port that we use to uh, start start things in our machine. So I'll I'll use 9090. It doesn't matter. So this is the proxy uh, server. So with respect to this, uh, I have to configure the browser as well. So there I'll use 9090 again change the port and started the proxy uh, okay then here they they do have mentioned uh, about uh, certificate but uh, I'll, I'll uh, skip this part as well in order to save some time so so that uh, when you access uh, this through the box proxy of course we will see that uh, uh, this is not a trusted uh, uh, site uh, so that uh, we can add, a, add an exception there in the browser and go ahead so I'll, I'll skip this one you can uh, just read it out and uh, configure your machines if you are doing uh, configure your browser to use the JMeter proxy start Firefox uh, edit preferences here the uh, configuration in the browser side I will start Firefox I'm running through quickly because uh, in order to save time but uh, if you have any uh, questions so if you have any uh, problems uh, doing this please let me know we can uh, we'll discuss uh, afterwards as well Edit preferences, advanced network. Here, check uh, options, advanced network, and then settings. Right, uh, so we are in the same screen here because uh, the browser versions has been now uh, changed a lot so the UIs are a bit different uh, with respect to this uh, guide uh, and manual proxy configuration we need to switch into manual proxy configuration address into localhost into IP and port so I'll put uh, localhost <coughs> and then port uh, the same port that I have used there 99 uh, check use this proxy server for all protocols you have to tick, the tick? Yeah. 
use this proxy server for all protocols. So that has been done. You click OK. So that is also done. So now it's time for us to uh, record and see. Right. So uh, have a look at this uh, recording controller. So we have only one. Uh, one request which is not related to our application which is something else download cdn.mozilla.net so since we have uh, started that proxy server the requests are now going through it and that's why those getting recorded so we need to identify those uh, uh, non-related uh, requests and remove them uh, when we are done with the uh, script recording so uh, I'll I'll paste uh, our test URL. Test URL here that you can see. Oh. Are we doing something in the test environment? <laughs> yeah. Okay, apparently they have uh, taken down the application so it will be started in uh, one minute's time before that uh, <coughs> we'll wait for a while now. so these are the kind of uh, issues you can expect in a session like this <laughs> So this happens in uh, very important demonstrations as well. So it's fairly okay for us to have in this kind of internal session. Mm, okay. Let me try. I'll remove these few uh, requests which are not related to our text so that we are the own what has been reported to our text. <coughs> any anything uh, any questions uh, we can uh, discuss during this short period of time until the server gets up Okay, so we can go ahead with our test.
you can see these are related to our actually our application number of uh, requests especially uh, CSS, JS, lots of uh, references. Now I'm uh, going in. make it clearer in the in the script I'll uh, group them so this is not uh, required uh, not essential but I'll group them so that uh, we are clear on uh, the separate actions this is this was the login screen login page and then we are done with uh, logging in so we have landed in uh, in uh, welcome page right then uh, I'll go to search travel bill There will be more actions. Take all them into another simple controller. So these are uh, simple controllers which you can group a uh, few requests together just for the sake of uh, having it uh, in a clearer way. This is uh, search. Travel bill. And then we can uh, click on uh, log out action. So we so with this uh, actually we are done with the uh, recording. That means we can stop uh, stop the proxy. Right. <coughs> Let's go back to the guide. Record your navigation, uh, click on few links on JMeter pages, that is the artist. Select thread to add listener summary report. So uh, they recommend a, a listener into this thread to thread to which is called summary report. So you have lots of listeners here. So these are uh, listeners that gives different perspectives, a different uh, way of uh, looking at uh, the results. So I'm a fan of this uh, view results tree, which uh, will show you the the response of the request uh, in this uh, particular window, which is more useful for you to see where the required uh, response has been taken in place. Uh, so that's it. Then the uh, next few steps are they are to execute the script so that we can do in uh, our own way. Uh, so I'll move out from uh, this guide, JMeter guide. Now it's uh, time for us to fine-tune the script. Of course we have these uh, unnecessary requests which are not related to our disk. So I'll remove those at first point.
okay uh, that is done then then of course uh, we need to actually it's, it's, you know anyone can uh, create these kind of scripts these are very state straightforward scripts but if you look at a good test script and a basic test script the main difference is you will you will have you will have uh, lots of checkpoints uh, especially assertions where where it's very important for us to know whether the correct response has been received or correct functionality has been uh, performed during our test so it's very important for us to make sure correctly i mean the test has been properly done otherwise you know uh, you will get some response into the request that you are sending so so that will not highlighted as a failure in jmeter if you have got some sort of a response i'll show you that in, in, in this uh, uh, script execution for example now if you are supposed to see certain result in the in the travel bill search action so you need to make sure that particular travel bill has been uh, appeared during the search or something like that so in order to make sure that you need to have checkpoints those are called in assertions uh, in, in this uh, jmeter context so for example now uh, in this particular home page or the login page at least we can uh, assert this login information text so here in this particular place we can include uh, assertion so uh, so don't worry all these things are uh, in, in my document which i'll uh, of course uh, share with you guys so don't worry how how uh, how to locate these assertions and uh, all these things those are there in the document i'll share that so we will add an assertion so that's why i told you these are the fundamental things so even though you do this in gatling or some other load runner or whatever the performance testing tool these are mandatory uh, fundamental things to do otherwise uh, even though we create a performance test script we are not sure whether proper results has been uh, received during the test so in order to make sure that has been done we need to have assertions response assertion and put uh, the text here so if in case if this uh, this say this jmeet test in case if this text is not there in the response uh, that will be uh, highlighted as a failure in jmeet so that's how you get to know that uh, particular request is failed right here in welcome page uh, once you are logged in so you can for example you can assert this text welcome welcome and then uh, something uh, unique like uh, username so you have the user id here in the page itself so these are the things that we can assert these are very effective because uh, we need to know whether the uh, during the test you know that there can be situations like that even though we are uh, putting different few different users uh, there can be situations like the same user is logging in so that is maybe due to a issue in the script or issue in the application so these are the checkpoints you need to uh, think out of the box when you are asserting 
so I have put a few checkpoints now. We'll uh, run this and see how it works. Yeah, okay, before we uh, go ahead with uh, the execution, we need to have this uh, one of the config elements which is uh, cookie manager I think uh, that is that that is something to do with our framework I guess because we are using cookies so this has to be there otherwise uh, you will get the failures in, especially in our context accelerator platform we need to have this cookie manager of course there are some uh, config elements like uh, uh, cache managers these are the uh, config elements we can simulate this caching etc so you all can uh, have a look at uh, the available uh, elements there as well when you have time and also yeah that is done now we are ready to execute this sensi so I'll have a uh, eye on this view results tree listener so that we can see the uh, response request and the response start button uh, here even in the run you have this uh, uh, run and stop uh, all these functions even there's a toolbar here So the test has been started. So login, this is the login uh, request. You can see the response there in the HTML view. So here uh, the user has been logged in so uh, here you can see this uh, text as well so user has been logged in uh, properly and uh, let's go on to the uh, search travel page as well so you can see the results of the uh, search travel uh, function so uh, to make uh, things clear i mean i'll i'll uh, i'll remove these uh, unnecessary items for the moment uh, ola css js css js js yes. okay so that will be clear when when i execute this in different uh, ways uh, so it will be clear for you guys right right uh, so we have executed the first test which is uh, which is uh, one thread one user going through one uh, loop so this is uh, another most important place uh, in, in uh, jmeter testing this thread group, thread group uh, property so the variables uh, configurations uh, this is quite uh, important for us to define a test in a way like you know there are requirements when it comes comes to performance test there are requirements that you need to uh, loop the same test over and over again so that is one of the tests that we have done uh, with Nokia so we we had to loop the same test over and over again until a certain period of time uh, uh, yeah during certain period of time so there are certain tests that you need to have parallel uh, only parallel execution of users so there you can uh, sim simulate 10 10 or 100 users simultaneously 
uh, going through certain certain uh, feature and then uh, it comes to an end at the end of the script so there are most of the times we have a combination of this users are looping and uh, also we have uh, simultaneous users at the same time and uh, those are the places uh, here we have number of threads users this is the place uh, to control that we can uh, create a uh, few few threads at once and loops so this is the place where you you can loop this same test twice if you put uh, two here and ramp up period this is one important uh, aspect of uh, jmeter testing i'm sure um, uh, if, if you put this in your cv uh, and uh, if someone is there in the interview panel who knows uh, jmeter testing he will definitely ask whether you can you please explain the ramp up time so how how what what do you mean by ramp up period so that is quite a, a fundamental thing in uh, jmeter so this this stands for uh, uh, for example take take a example you need to simulate 10 users 10 users need to be getting into the application within the sorry let's say five users five users they need to get in into the system during 10 seconds of time but not at the very beginning it's not that five users uh, get into the system at, at the same point when the time is zero. It's not the case. Here the requirement is you have 10 seconds. At the end of the 10 seconds, all the five users has to be in the system. So it's like that. I mean, otherwise you can't perform these uh, tests with high user counts. If you try to put a thousand users into the system at once, that will not work so that's why we need to have time window to get all the users into the system once they are in of course that won't be a problem so we we had in vgr i remember we had a, a test scenario with uh, with the uh, real user customer so they wanted to have uh, i think 1500 users in uh, 5 minutes time or 10 minutes time with that with, during that period of time the requirement is to get 1500 users into the system within that uh, five minutes time so we have time we don't need to put them uh, simultaneously at very first point so here this is the parameter we can use in such cases so if we put 10 this this in seconds 10 seconds and five users how this will work like uh, each and every two seconds one user will get into the system that's how it works so within 10 seconds you have to get five users into the system so each and every two seconds of time one user will get into the system that's how it works in the in jm right there we go i think got it right is, is that clear? So that is a fundamental uh, calculation for the way that uh, JMeter works. Each and every two seconds, one user will get into the system. So at the end of the ten seconds, five users will be there. Okay. Hope uh, that is clear for everyone. So uh, so that is the use of ramp up period here. I'll I'll execute the same test uh, with two threads, so two users. Our accelerator framework actually it uh, it uh, it works. Uh, the same same username, same user ID can be used uh, for few different uh, users at the same time. So that 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 uh, facility is there that is uh, feasible in accelerator framework because uh, user IDs are such uh, uh, different user groups uh, they do share certain user IDs in, in real real scenario for example now there can be a office uh, 
they, they have only one user ID which share among all the all the employees so they use uh, the same ID for their work so since that is the case even a single user ID can be used here as uh, used here to uh, show the multiple user scenario so I'll use the same user and I have uh, two users as uh, the configuration so when you look at this uh, still running Here you can see the two, two login actions are there. Uh, two logins are there. One is here and second one is this. So, uh, but with the same user. So now in, in uh, the next case, we need to parameterize this kind of uh, action. So next requirement is we need to have multiple users but different different usernames right so in that case uh, here I have few users in travel scenario I'll, I'll create a create a data file probably you can use uh, CSV files in this kind of case scenarios and then this comma separated username and password right so I have three users now in this uh, users.csv file so our target is uh, target is to parameterize this and link with the uh, file so that uh, we can read users uh, take users out of the uh, file and process right so that is the aim uh, this again these uh, these sections are in the in the document itself so you can have a look at uh, later so i'll uh, add another config element called csv dataset config so I'll put here here now I can use uh, relative path as I said uh, because I have uh, locate uh, created this uh, csv file within the folder that I have started my jmeter instance data users dot csv and uh, variable names I'll use username and password so these uh, variable names will refer to these values right so comma separated values username and password and delimiter is comma even we can use any other delimiter pipe or whatever in such cases whatever you use here you have to specify in the in this country right? so uh, that is safe in order to see whether we we are getting we have done the correct configuration you can always use uh, this kind of uh, this uh, request even this request name is uh, configurable so you can uh, simply print your username or the print any variable here and see whether we get the correct value so these are the ways that we we debug certain issues in the scripts uh, 
so uh, so you need you can uh, locate the fundamental issues if you don't get any username here when you are running so it's fairly clear that we have not done the configuration correctly maybe the uh, file name uh, we have uh, wrong file name here you can see stamx so that has been uh, printed in the other name so so the uh, jmeter has taken two different usernames from the csv file we have created right yes it works uh, top to bottom uh, each thread uh, picks the uh, topmost item topmost then uh, the second one and go ahead not the uh, ran not random right so uh, that's it so now we have uh, taken it into consideration but still we didn't configure it in the script even though this shows uh, different username we haven't uh, configured it in the request right so we need to you can see the hard coded value this we need to parameterize un and another place you have to parameterize and also the password so whatever the variables you defined in the in the jmeter you can access those with dollar and curly brackets right? so we have uh, given these variables un and pw now we are accessing them in uh, dollar and within curly brackets right? so now this we have uh, configured and it's time to see whether we are getting the correct results right so the two users two separate users uh, has to be logged in okay right this is the right now we have uh, we have uh, included a response session uh, with with the username right that's that is the only reason uh, for uh, this particular request to be failed right it's, it's failing that only because we have uh, put a checkpoint where you need to have the proper use id for example now if you if you disable this uh, response in welcome page let's say we disable this this response asset that means we don't have any checkpoints and then we execute the same same scenario right then both yeah both users get in without any failure but <laughs> but in reality that is not correct right i mean according to what yeah so so there we need to now we need to parameterize this as well in order to get the correct right correct results so we can verify that has been properly done right and that is the way so that is what i wanted to show you because uh, we need to put assertions in place otherwise uh, you don't know script shows uh, things are going fine but the results are not uh, what we have expected so now uh, we have we have parameterized the assertion as well then we can uh, simply enable the assertion and try to see the results right 
so it works as expected okay questions issues so okay <coughs> right so that is one thing so you can see these these users uh, start parallelly questions no uh, parallelly and uh, run through the uh, test case right so uh, if you change this uh, loop count I'll, uh, change number of users one and then put works in loop counts okay. then ramp up period if you need to uh, see the ramp up you can uh, do something like this let's uh, keep the loop count as one and number of users three we have three in the uh, csv file and the ramp up period will be 12 so every uh, four, four seconds we will have one you see so end of the 12 seconds we will have all three users in so that is the scenario so here in this case you will see only one user has been started right then the other one even though it uh, shows as like the case we had in loop uh, this is uh, if you reduce the this maybe for nine you will see that uh, yeah before this user gets logged out the other one has started uh, after the four, four seconds of time so that's how it works right I think it's uh, very clear for you guys but uh our case we need to uh, make sure if 100 users hit on the search travel button search travel function at a certain point how it will behave right but in this scenario if we configure this uh, like <coughs> ramp up period we will keep it as one and if we uh, set this to 100 and start the scenario even in this case all the hundred users will not hit the search travel function at once because that is not that is not the way how this has been designed users will go uh, all the way how you know different response times they will have different response times so they will be at different point of uh, different uh, points at the given time right? if you put that not not the hundred scenario but if you place this three and run you will see that we have started at the same time but uh, you know these different uh, 
even you can see uh, this this user has uh, reached if, if, if you put three users you will not uh, significantly see this but uh, first user has already logged out where the other one is uh, reaching the uh, search travel right so that 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 should not be the case I mean if, if that is the case we will not uh, get real 100 user access on search travel bill at once. So if we are to, if we need to do that, uh, we have a way of doing it. So there's a, there's a uh, timer in, yeah, there's a timer called uh, synchronization timer, which makes case this is three which makes the scenarios like this if we put this as three this timer will keep all the all the users until uh, the third and last uh, user reaches this search travel bill, and then execute at once so that we will get the uh, correct load on the particular function Right? Did you get that? I mean, now, for example, let's say uh, three three users has been uh, configured into this, like we have, and we have uh, this synchronization timer in place for three users. So, uh, for example, if uh, the first user has reached the search travel bill. At very first, uh, as the very first user, then he will be kept in, kept on hold until the other two users reaches this particular place because search search travel will be uh, place. So once all are here, all are in search travel will uh, request. They will uh, collectively they will put into the application so that all the requests will be. Uh, put into the uh, server so that is how it works this synchronization time you will see now if if you uh, put again this ramp up time as 12 and uh, we go without synchronization time first so you will you will see now uh, even four seconds, uh, four, four seconds of time. Uh, even this uh, first user has already logged out, and uh, second one uh, here he has logged out, and third one here. So first, even first two has been, even after the first two has been logged out from the system, only uh, third one has reached the search travel function, right? So now if we if this works fine. That shouldn't be the case. Then uh, first one should be uh, kept on hold uh, without logging out. Uh, he will uh, be active until the others reaches the uh, search travel bill. Yeah, first guy, even though he has reached, he hasn't got logged out. Right now, all the three users uh, logged in here yeah, you can see three search travel do request at once right and then logging out uh, from that point of view going forward logging out, logging out, logging out. Uh, so that's it I mean we are done with the time uh, so we'll uh, stop uh, our session at this point Otherwise, uh, we of course have uh, the facilities like uh, you know there are there are uh, situations we need to get values from peri peri the uh, certain values from a database and take that into the script in order to move forward with the next step. Like for example, now we have uh, these dits 
in the in the application where if you, when you create an order you have a did uh, this primary key value created in the database which which we refers like approving uh, authorizing so in order to go ahead with that uh, you don't get anything uh, any reference in the application UI or in the response you need to query that uh, uh, primary key value uh, behind and uh, then move forward with the other actions so that sort of uh, even to jmeet and there are lots of other functionality features with this like testing web services uh, you can extend this uh, jmeter this is open source tool into whatever way you want and use so uh, that's pretty much it uh, 3pm uh, any any questions final questions Anything unclear or any doubts? Yeah. Yeah, so that, that depends on the scenario that uh, we are going to test of course these uh, uh, you know images and uh, CSS JS files are I mean those are just references uh, see here now when you uh, get that uh, same script created from bad boy those are already filtered out so you can you can uh, make the request in a way like uh, here if you look at on this uh, one particular <coughs> request here you can retrieve all embedded resources these kind of uh, uh, configurations are there I mean, if you really want to uh, simulate that sort of you if you want to download all the images with each and every action you are doing so that sort of kind of configurations you can uh, try out rather than having all these uh, image references within the screen right so but uh, you know when we are doing this uh, performance tests we mainly target on uh, simulating the same scenario so that's why I have mentioned this cache, cache manager so we need to uh, put those uh, things in place and simulate the real scenario otherwise you know when, when one user access the application so he will not uh, get all these small images downloaded again and again so that is the real scenario so we need to simulate the real scenario if the real scenario is getting all these uh, items downloaded each and every time you can configure in that way as well Such things to be considered. yes exactly yes that's why I, I told I mean that that depends on the requirement for example now if we are to simulate this real-time ASA scenario you know now these guys have already uh, accessed this application and these are not brand new users so they have all these uh, images etc cached in so then we can go according to that so that's that's what we need to consider the real scenario as far as I see any other questions uh, yeah. yes Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yes. That is a possibility. So uh, here, like, uh, you can you can actually uh, 
for example there are certain ways so you, what what you meant like with the single login in so you will do multiple things within the script right so you perform all the three hmm yeah Okay. Uh, it's like this, Vimal. Uh, now, uh, I mean, in real scenario, you need to log in as a user to perform the action. So that has to be simulated somehow. Otherwise, you can't bypass that uh, in, in in this tool. I mean, that has to be done. But in the in the results. You will see now, for example, here you will see the search travel do here. Uh, search travel do, you have all the three hits. And so average, even average, you 